Good morning. I am pretty sure I've done something wrong this morning. And, uh, oops. I don't think I'm streaming to the event that I scheduled. I know that I am live. But, uh, yeah. I had to figure that one out. I had to read the manual on this thing. Anyway, for those that found a way to find me or are watching me later, this is Coffee with the Cowbell. And I am glad that you found me and uh, <clears throat> hopefully you found me in order to geek out with me on teams this morning and hopefully you got your cup of coffee as well all right let's try to get this thing going so uh, as you know I am always trying to figure out all my different uh, screens here so I just want to make sure that I am following chat if there is any. So give me one sec. All right. All right, we're looking good there. All right. Cool. Oh, and then uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Do one more thing here. Y'all know I'm never prepared. Everybody's used to this, right? <laughs> All my little streaming snafus. One day I'll have this whole thing figured out nice and easy. All right. So, uh, I'm here to just chat. I do see uh, someone in chat saying good morning. Good morning to you as well. I am here just to chat and geek out with you. Um on some team stuff and usually what I do is talk about stuff I don't know I, I, I think when you're a teams geek you find ways to get in teams scenarios throughout your week so it seems like every week I have something I could talk about from something that happened to me in just the last seven days I know I missed last week weekend uh, but yeah uh, just this week alone for instance um, I've, uh, and really I guess this was yesterday I had a conversation about guest collaboration in teams and my mental note is to really put some content together on that because the last two conversations I've been in on that over the last couple of weeks I realized how big a topic that is uh, there's a lot of layers to it it's good that there's a lot of collaboration scenarios possible, but I can imagine the typical Teams user might not be fully you know, aware of all the ways that you can collaborate. So, so one, that's my, that would be my first point, is to know that yes, you can collaborate with anyone really in Teams. Um, and so, let me first define collaboration, right? So by that, I mean um, going so far as to add them to a team, to work on files together, to uh, chat in a persistent channel, or as little as I just need them in a meeting for a moment. Um, you know, not necessarily a long term relationship, but I just need to chat for a second. I always like to make the point, anybody on the planet with the internet and at least a browser and maybe an email address, and, uh, if we're talking a uh, team instead of a meeting, can be collaborated with. So that's the attempt to dispel the myth. I can only collaborate with other people in my company that have a license for teams. I can only collaborate in my company period even if my 
vendor or my external whatever has a license but they're not in my company so I can't collaborate with them I want to dispel that myth you know if they're somebody you know that can join a meeting because they've got internet they can get in and if there is uh, you know someone with an email address that you, you can add them to a team the collaboration can happen to me that's a big deal um, kind of takes the barrier down um, you know for some guest collaboration is, is maybe not wanted I want to make sure nobody sees our stuff but uh, there are many scenarios where people do want to collaborate um, and so I thought that might be worth uh, talking about here today um, let's make sure I got the right let's see that's uh, yeah there we go um, yeah, I thought that might be worth talking about a little bit. So, st let's start with, and, and so the way I described it is a guest that you collaborate with, it's two types, is guests with a lowercase g and guests with a capital G. I consider a guest with a lowercase g to be basically like an anonymous user in a meeting, right? If I fire up a meeting right now, I can add anybody you know, if I want to, um, I have not added them to my tenant in any way. I've added them to the meeting. I've added some user who has internet access to a meeting for the purpose of that meeting and really not, nothing more. That's guess with a lowercase g. Guess with a capital G is really what I'm doing here. Whereas I want a relationship with this individual. Now, you know, not not necessarily a personal, you know, <laughs> I mean, more like a collaborative relationship. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, I almost took this conversation in a different uh, direction here. <laughs> I just sit here laughing with myself, drinking coffee. Uh, I want a collaborative relationship. I want to add them into my team, add them into my tenant. And so as we look here, that's done by really the same way I'd add someone that's in my company, I add a member. But uh, so this company is Contoso. But what if I want to add, you know, um, Susan at, at you know, uh, gmail.com. Um, actually, what did I do? Oh, I always have to remember to be an owner of the team I am in. And that's, uh, I'm going to switch to a different tenant here because I tend to forget where my ownership is. Let me go here to this guy. So to make it a little bit bigger for you. And this one is, uh, let's see, I think it's this one. So add a member and Susan at gmail.com. There is no Susan at gmail.com in the company, in the org, in the tenant, but I can add Susan as a guest, All right? And on the in the back end, Teams is going to make that relationship. So Susan's gonna when she gets this invite, she's gonna do a little work to basically uh, link her credentials with my with the Microsoft Cloud. At the end of the day, Susan will then be in. She'll always kind of be Susan with guest in parentheses and capital G. And she'll now have this proxy relationship on the back end that basically allows her to have a pseudo account in this team. And, um, you know, that's going to allow her to collaborate with us um, in terms of uh, chatting, files. There's a short list of things she can't do, like maybe adding new channels and tabs and whatnot, but your typical collaboration is going to be uh, able to be done with that with that uh, access and so does doesn't necessarily require her to have her own license you know internet email address I guess go download the 
desktop app. She's good to go. Um, so for many orgs, for many teams, that's that's great. I've got vendors I need to talk to. Uh, can I get them in this team and not do email anymore? Uh, I've got you know just external agencies, external companies. Um, so this is great for that. It's going to get even better um, as in my office hours yesterday we talked about the upcoming and I think I still have that upcoming Teams Connect Share Channels feature, which basically takes that to the next step <clears throat> by uh, making that process even more seamless um, in a nutshell. Um, so it's going to get even better. But uh, that concept that, yes, you can collaborate with people outside your org is is cool. Um, collaboration, you know, as I'm thinking about it, too, can also happen in another way where uh, I don't even know if I'd call it a guest period. I mean, it's more the, the, the value of federation in that hear from chat uh, if someone does have a you know a, another a team's account I can chat with them and I can really get a lot of collaboration done in just a group chat like this one uh, where I would you know let's assume Susan you know at gmail you know did have an account um, to be able to chat here I mean if you've done chat in the private chat area in teams you know it's not just like text messages I mean uh, you start attaching files and you know tabs and you know tabs up here to different things whiteboards one notes you know it's a little pseudo collaboration area even though it's just you know group chat um, so there's certainly more bells and whistles if we, if we create a full team but you can get a lot done on the group chat so that's almost like a third scenario for collaboration externally if, if they're you know some some works have their have that federation kind of blocked off but if the federation is open or or you know not even fully full wide open but maybe just open to you, um, you can chat with them and get something going so I certainly have some long-term chats with external parties uh, so didn't go so far as to add them to a separate team as a guest with a capital G but our group chat collaboration you know continues and so what's great for me is all in one place on my end one teams app and i've got my teams internal and you know shared i've got my meetings and i've got my chats with internal or external people all in one place i'm trying my best to like get out of email <laughs> you know the more people that i interact with that I can do that in teams that's better for me part of that is because I you know trying to use best practices for managing my conversations um, I, I could I can imagine some of you thinking I no way do I want all my conversations in teams is so much if you keep watching the, this uh, coffee with cowbell if you keep watching cute for teams uh, you'll get the tips to let you realize I do have the ability to manage a bunch of chats in Teams and manage the all the notifications. It doesn't have to be a Wild West. So that's why I want more conversations in Teams because I feel like I've got more ability to manage um, to manage them all. And I just love that having it all in one place kind of a, a effect. So, um, so yeah, so you can have collaboration here, but Guess with a capital G is what we just described there or just just demonstrated there adding a member as a guest and then you'll wonder well you know how do I know where where there's a guest and whatnot try to find an example of that because um, that's that is called out in the uh, membership list of course I can't find one with uh, with guests, let's see here. There's a couple ways to get there. This little, the little eye. Does this have one? Yeah. So the little eye on the side will tell you what members are there, and if there were guests, it would call that out. 
You can also get there by going to Manage Team and your members, see as it says, members and guests. They use a little case G, which kind of hurts my whole uh, thing I was just trying to describe. But <laughs> um, yeah, so, so they would label the guests here. So that's kind of how you know. And uh, if you are like an admin in an org where you're kind of concerned about a lot of guests being added to a team, I would, I would recommend looking into the, uh, there are back end review processes to kind of review the guest accounts that are in your tenant from an Azure AD perspective. So if you did need some kind of audit to say, okay, maybe there's a lot of, maybe there's too many guests. Maybe there's guests that have been in here a while that aren't, that are no longer valid, things like that. There's a review process that you can go through for, um, you know, looking into that, uh, maybe for even deciding who you want to remove things like things of that nature. So that's something worth considering. All right. Um, and I feel like let me check out something here. I don't have my admin. Let me check one thing here what I was going to do I don't have my admin set up on either one of these which is interesting it's going to show the, the back end portal for um, taking a look at that admin setting that's interesting yeah oh yeah this, this demo environment is a little bit new so that's why that's not set up but in the teams uh as an admin, you got a couple places to kind of decide yes or no to guests in the tenant period. Um, Azure AD to actually look at the guest profiles and manage those. Um, you might sometimes have to do that. So here's another here's a, another thing about guests. Is that when I, Susan at Gmail, am invited to your team sometimes it is not clear to me what I need to do to uh, accept the invitation. Sometimes I miss the email invitation, things like that. So for instance, if nothing else, admins know that you've got a place to resend an invite. I've seen that be needed. So I'm trying to collaborate with Susan. She says she can't get in. I'm thinking she missed the email. Let's resend another invite because we, we want to initiate that process of, uh, you know, associating her credentials. So that as an admin, as a, you know, as a back end process, that may be something you'll need to do. Um, but you can resend. You can see who has accepted all that good stuff. So it doesn't have to be something where you kind of start some collaboration and now it's out of your control. It's not at all out of your control. You have a lot of back end ways to manage that. Okay. Now, guess with a lowercase g, if I were to fire up a meeting, okay, I'm going to fire up this meeting here. I think I keep promising you, or I've, I've promised my other group, to fix my microphone in this demo. That's still on my to-do list. That's a 2022 New Year's resolution that I haven't. It's only January, so I got time. But that's that's one of my things I want to do. Um, I've got a meeting here. There's someone on the planet with internet and a browser that I want to be in my meeting. All right, inviting someone here at this box, putting their email address in, um, right? I can invite them there. But what about um, the share invite button? Copy the meeting link. Okay, what does that look like? Let's go and uh, control V. I mean, obviously it's big. Uh, da, da, da. Right, it's a big link. But this link is the link to this meeting that anybody on the planet who has this can join my meeting. 
So for instance, a hyperlink on a web page, you know, for, for joining this meeting. But this is the easy way to get some a guest, lowercase g, an anonymous user or, or any user really, into this meeting. I just need to get them this link, uh, email, whatever it may be. Um, so collaborating with someone externally in a meeting is as easy as getting them that link. And, and Teams tries to make it easy to get that link. It used to be that the way you do it is, uh, do we still even have it in here? Meeting info. And then you have the copy join info, it would give you the whole deal, which is good too. I mean, that, that might be the better way to do it. I, I just like the fact that they give us that uh, ability to get just the link. Usually that's all I want. But sometimes I will want the whole. We can see what this looks like if I. Oops. That's a new look. Uh, control V. That's going to give me the whole big thing here. All right. And that's good. I mean, especially if I'm putting it in the email address. And that's going to give me the, the uh, audio conferencing dial in number and everything. So the link that I hit, that I got from that share is this little guy here. Uh, you know, I could right click and copy that hyperlink, but it is nice to give someone, especially someone that's not as familiar with Teams, to give them this whole thing. So, you know, very nice way to get get it in either way, either the meeting info or just the good old share invite. I like that. You may have even noticed as I started this, let me just do it again. As I actually started this meeting, teams did a couple things to really try to help me get started quickly so even as I am hitting meet now I'm already I've already got a link right so that it copy to my clipboard so that even before I jump in the meeting I can get this to somebody so that they can jump in too. Uh, meeting options are there as well I think we've talked about well maybe not on coffee with Cal but that, meeting options is great too but let me just keep going here. So, uh, yeah, so starting the meeting, uh, getting a copy of the meeting link in my clipboard to pay somewhere. And then you see it even tries to give me a uh, convenient share via email, which wants to open up, you know, my email. And uh, man, I have not configured very much on this machine. I don't have time for that right now. Let's exit this. Uh, let's do it via this guy. I haven't added anything here either. This should be a little quicker though. But yes, yeah, it's, it's making it easy for me to uh, share. Um, yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> and an email as well. So even before I start, Teams is really trying to help me out to get this thing going successfully. And then when I do start it, um, get it going, once again, it tries again. It's, you know, it's really trying. I like that. It's, uh, this started, this feature kind of started a few months back, I think. But I like it. It, it keeps uh, giving me these chances, um, especially given that I'm coming into this meeting alone. Teams is like, don't. Why do you want to be alone? Don't you want somebody in your meeting? So it's giving me all these chances to help me get somebody in the meeting. So another copy meeting link there. So yes, I have to click uh, click those things away, but that's a small price to pay for the helpfulness that Teams is trying to provide. So this meeting, anybody can join, lowercase g kind of a guest versus big G putting them in a team all right um, and that's really and that's the high level simplification we could dive in and it's there'd be addition probably additional layers there as well um, and I think I might make that a future topic especially given we're almost at the top of the hour here um, so I hope that was helpful um, but <clears throat> the main thing I really want to help with there is this idea that uh, it's got to be you know tough to collaborate with external people it doesn't have to be tough 
if you try any of these things and it does seem tough, something's not working, and you're using Teams in your org, in your company, it could just be that you there's some settings, some policies you're not aware of in your org that are controlling things. In, in what I've demonstrated, this Contoso org has guests, uh, guest collaboration, everything turned on. I, I don't have any restrictions. So, um, but you could be somewhere where the admins have decided to do something differently. You may be in a position to make a request for a change, or you may have to live with the policies that your org has in place. All right. So that I hope is helpful. Um, I hope that gave you a chance to finish your coffee. And uh, again, I'll try to do this every week. Saturday is 11.30 a.m. Eastern. I realize that that is early for, but early is probably good given that we're all having coffee together. So with that, uh, glad you joined me again today and we will see you again next week. All right, have a good one. Mm -hmm.